Uh, we're going to move over to Shannon Fontaine now um, from MTech. Hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm at MTech, which some of you are. Um, I'm going to start. I, you know what? Everybody started with their mission statement, so I'm going to give you a really short. It's already short, but it's uh, the mission statement of MTech is to assist in the sustainability of the tourism industry in Manitoba by de uh, delivering current relevant training. So you'll see that as we go through this. Um, when you look at this, oh, back up. Sorry. Okay, so MTech has some key courses like uh, Manitoba Service Excellence, training to give your business a competitive edge. We deliver smart choices, alcohol service, and smart choices, uh, responsible sale of cannabis for the Liquor and Gaming Commission. Um, and again, we have our own programs, which is Manitoba Ambassador, Winnipeg Ambassador, um, business skills training. We can deliver everything from how to start a business to how to operate it and about leadership and everything we've been experienced in this last year. Uh, but certainly the business skills. And we have, I'm going to skip to personal development because that has grown this year as well with everything everybody's been going through. We've certainly added a lot of um, personal development and stress management. Uh, so we've got about 80 different training sessions. And thank goodness for Zoom. As we sit here, glitch or no glitch, thank goodness for Zoom. Um, you can turn the page. We delivered all of our training via Zoom uh, in this past year. So if you go to the next screen, please. No? Okay, well, I'll talk and talk. <laughs> um, Amtech trained 35, or I'm sorry, 10,500 people last year during a pandemic. Um, 10 months or two months we were closed. And again, when I say thank goodness for Zoom, that's how we delivered it. So for any of you that attended our training, um, we, do you want me to wait till you do this? There, that's the next one more screen. There we go. So 15,500, I missed 5,000 people, it's okay, <laughs> in 2020. And again, between Zoom webinars, which we deliver from our office here, um, and again, they're, they're trainer-led. It would be no different if you were sitting in an MTech classroom. Typically, we would have classroom training going on every day. Um, so we gave Zoom a shot, and it was really, really successful. So um, again, we've trained every region in the province of Manitoba. We've trained um, international students, uh, every every walk of life. So if you want to go to the next screen, clean it right. Um, clean it right was developed because of this pandemic. Um, sitting on government calls, hearing about consumer confidence and lack of consumer confidence, thinking our tourism industry has been decimated. And when we open, if people won't come back, it's going to be tragic. Hence, was born clean it right. Um, so there's okay. If you want to go one more one more slide. So Clean It Right, again, it's an enhanced cleaning program. We developed it, uh, and we also deliver it for the tourism industry. And, and we've had many other people other than the tourism industry take it, and has, we've ended up gifting it to 10 provinces and territories. So Clean It Right is a national program. This launched in June. Um, again, the main goal was regaining consumer confidence and returning to your business, increase the safety of guests, visitors, and employees, and it is available online and free to the tourism, hospitality, and retail industries. Um, this will outlive COVID-19. Uh, this is an enhanced cleaning program that talks about things that we don't know still exist, like Legionnaire's disease and E. coli and all the other uh, things you can catch from going anywhere. So um, it certainly was developed for the pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, but this will be a, a new standard of cleaning. Um, it's in, again, five modules, uh, hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, Jenny took the bed and breakfast one, uh, restaurants and food services, retail businesses, and then we got a request from offices and service centers, and uh, next week, on the 21st of April, we are launching tourism transportation. We were requested from the Churchill Chamber of Commerce to develop an enhanced cleaning program for them. I said, you know what, this is perfect, it's part of our mandate, and hence, um, this will cover planes, trains and automobiles, uh, rental cars, tender buggies, um, and again, there's 22 regional airports in Manitoba that will cover all of those areas and train stations, so um, we're thrilled to be offering that, and again, that will launch next week. So over, we launched it in June 2020. We wanted to be ready for when the restaurants were reopening the first time, and since then, over 6,000 people have registered, and over 4,500 people have completed and over 300 businesses certified in Manitoba. So you'll see the little decal in their window. This is just Manitoba numbers. This isn't the rest of the provinces and territories that are, are delivering cleaner rights. So we're thrilled with the success of it. 
handling difficult situations also uh, during COVID-19 and beyond. And this was created during the pandemic as well. Hearing about all of the, um, go to the next slide, all of the businesses that were getting $5,000 fines uh, and people not knowing how to deal with it. So I look at the little um, McDonald's in Ikawa that we've gone to on our way places and they got a $5,000 fine for no social distancing. So the dynamic of a 17 or 18 or 40 year old standing behind a counter and having to tell you to, that it's, you need to pull your mask up or put a mask on before you come in. Um, this talks about the actual health orders. Um, provincial health orders are you don't have to enforce, you have to ask them nicely and remembering that they're your customer. So uh, that seems to be forgotten as well that there some places are not being too friendly to customers about it. Um, as long as you have advised the customer, you don't get the fine. So that is, and again, that was the purpose of it. This is online, this is free, and it will also outlive uh, COVID-19 because it's handling difficult situations. But it is talking about contact tracing and all the things that we have to do right now, um, either as a restaurant or retailer or, or basically any business. So we're happy with the result of that as well. And that just launched right after Christmas in January. Next slide. So um, be the employer you'd like to work for is the motto of Amtech. And uh, that came about because I think so many of us, and I, I will say personally, <laughs> I came from the hotel industry. Um, for 13 years, I started my career in the hotel industry. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who get promoted to being your boss and they shouldn't be, or they haven't got the skills to do it. And what we always need to keep in mind is to be the person you would like to work for. And then everything will be good is how I feel. So um, that is our, our motto. And it's, it's uh, we have a mission statement. This is exactly how we, we operate here. So any questions about any training we have, we have a comprehensive web website. Uh, most of our training is free. We can leverage some of our government funding. And when it runs out, we put MTech money into it. So um, we're here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Valuable uh, services you offer. Thank you. Um, okay, next up is Sadam. So we're going to turn it over to you, Sylvie. Hi, everybody. Um, so we're here today to talk about Sadam and who we are. Uh, as you can see, we've been around for 25 years now. Um, you can move over to the next slide if you like. So our mission is there on the screen. It's to stimulate, encourage, support, and coordinate economic development in bilingual communities and with bilingual entrepreneurs. Uh, so we work with a variety of partners. So this can include bilingual municipalities who are members of the AMBM, which is the Association for Manitoba Bilingual Municipalities. Uh, we currently have 16 members. We also work with CDCs who are community development corporations. So we work with volunteer groups, nonprofits, and cooperatives. Uh, we work with Francophone entrepreneurs, individuals, and businesses, either within those 16 municipalities or outside. Um, another big client are Francophone immigrants. We work with schools in the French Immersion and English School uh, divisions. And we also work with Anglophone clients who fit within one of our sectors. So those are sectors um, you see there on the screen. You see, oh, you can go back one, sorry. Um, so you see it's a bit larger than tourism, but there's a lot of ties. So a little bit about each sector, business services, here we had advisors um, that have expertise to help like entrepreneurs and businesses complete all the necessary steps that are involved in creating and operating a business. So for example, this team can support entrepreneurs by you know, reviewing, helping uh, to create business plans, financial plans, so they'll coach you through the steps of like incorporating or registering and so much more. They also offer a three-day training program called Business Start and it talks about all the factors that an entrepreneur needs to know to operate a business. Um, we have the Community Economic Development. This team supports impl implementation of major economic development projects um, in collaboration with those uh, municipalities. So for example, two projects they're currently working on, um, they just put together a funding support team at SIDEM. So whether you're a nonprofit or for-profit, um, we've compiled a, a master file of available grants at regional, provincial, and national level. So you just need to fill out the form and we'll kind of do the research for you and, and propose to you certain grants that would fit your project. Um, another program they're working on is a digital project to get better high-speed internet connection in our communities. And that's a project in collaboration with Valley Fiber. 
They also support feasibility studies, consultation for infrastructure projects, research, funding requests, and they also facilitate, facilitate strategic plans. So if, if anybody's looking um, to review or to do a strategic plan, you can approach us with that. There's economic immigration. This is people help, helping people immigrate to Manitoba and they offer exploratory visits, but more importantly, helping um, with integrating them in our communities by, by finding jobs and training them for the Canadian workforce. The youth sector here, they work with a lot of schools and students. Um, they offer presentations to schools and offer summer camps that train youth about entrepreneurship. So what it, what it is to be an entrepreneur, uh, how do you make a profit, how do you budget? So we're kind of setting the stage for future entrepreneurs and we're seeing um, a lot of kids op opening up their little shops and sometimes it, it, it does develop, we're seeing throughout the years into, into real destination and products. So they have content, um, content for ages um, from kindergarten to grade 12. The employability sector, um, here they offer five programs that can help Francophones find and maintain employment. They offer a pre-departure program to better prepare immigrants for the Canadian workforce before they arrive in Canada. Um, another program they offer is targeted to people living with disabilities and again to integrate them in that workforce. Um, and they also host about once or twice a year a job fair, so kind of like a speed dating event that matches employers with employees. And then there's a the tourism sector. So you can move forward to the next slide, please. So the four main things we do or the four main ways we can help you um, are listed there. So we have product and destination development. Again, here we work with entrepreneurs or destination with the development of Francophone tourism experiences. Uh, we do that through one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, we help create project plans, budgets, review marketing plans. Uh, sometimes we'll plant some seeds for ideas and experiences. We link you with appropriate partners and industry members. Um, so we can also help you with grant writing and we can help you market and launch a new experience or business. And another service there is marketing and communication. That's through our Bonjour Manitoba brand, which represents rural Francophone tourism. Uh, and really that's just content creation. We do a bit of training, not as much as MTech, um, you know, a few, maybe one a month kind of thing. Um, and it's mostly offered in French, sometimes in English. So like I said, it's not mass training, it's very tailored to specific needs or groups or clients or specific to projects. Um, so for example, we have a community who's developing a park and they need to raise funds. So we're offering them a capital campaign, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one -on one-on-one training session. Um, another training session we offer every year, it's, um, it's in French, but it's translate to interpretive guiding, kind of one-on-one. So it's offered to our partner tourism agencies who operate tourism centers as well as uh, museums to help the summer staff that they hired to be better um, interpreters. And then there's positioning strategy lobbying. This is more internal, but here we sit on boards at a regional, provincial and national level to advocate and to ensure that Francophone tourism um, has a place in the industry and that it keeps growing. So in a nutshell, that's us. And you can contact myself um, at any time if you have any questions and I'll either answer or I'll forward you to a member of my team. Hey, thank you so much, Sylvie. All right, uh, now we're going to uh, move to uh, Community Futures and Shelly Johnson from Triple R Community Futures is gonna be our presenter. Over to you, Shelly. Hey, everyone. Um, which one do you have first? Oh, did you change my slide? That doesn't look right. <laughs> um, okay, so community features, um, we work with communities um, to build their businesses, either expansion. Um, we also do startups and community development for um, youth projects and projects within the communities. Um, we services include the business and nonprofit advisories. We also do um, business advisory for, um, sorry, business advi advisories uh, to help um, with planning for their loans, loan applications. Um, we do strategic planning. Um, yeah, you can go to the next slide. 
some of the training we provide is um, based with um, Community Futures Pan West. So it is a higher up and it can go for um, small councils or boards that people sit on, like volunteer boards. Um, there are 16 community futures across Manitoba. Um, the regions are on the map there and the information, the contact information at the end of the slides shows the website for Community Futures Manitoba. And you can pick which region you are from to see who your contact person would be. Go ahead. Um, the startup and expansion for businesses that we help with um, information that would be within your community. So if, if you needed help with the resources and finding anyone, we can help with that. Um, we can help with connecting with different financial institutions. We want you to get the best business advice that you can get and we're happy to work with other um, business opportunities that might be out there for you. Uh, we help with business writing or writing business plans. And okay, next slide. Um, our loan program is, um, it can vary from client to client, but the terms of it and the basics of it are a maximum of 150,000. But with that, we can also partner with other CFs and increase that amount. Um, again, it depends on what the loan is for and what the parameters of everything are. But the basics are the five-year term, um, interest rate can vary. Um, we usually ask for 10% equity. Our loans are based a lot on um, person, um, character. <laughs> the character reference and characters of our clients. We do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. That's what sets us apart from banks and credit unions is the fact that we, we continue the business. People are not just a number. People are people. Businesses are businesses. We want to interact and we want to see your business succeed, thrive, and expand. Go ahead. Um, we all do different things within our regions, within our CFs. Um, some CFs are more focused on loans. Some are more focused on uh, community development. Some on youth business camps or sorry, youth um, business development. Uh, we all do different, kind of focus on different things. So there's self-employment programs, youth, youth camps, we go into the schools to facilitate the junior achievement program. Um, some CFs have created their own programs to go into schools, whether it be for the younger years or into high school, and business finance and business management and teaching them how to um, create a business. Uh, we also partner with our other CFs and a lot of different agencies that are actually on this chat and on this panel. Go ahead. So this is the information. Um, I've just put the generic contact CF Manitoba. And from there, from the website, we are all listed on there. You can, it's easy enough you just actually type in where you're from and it will take you to the right CF um, that is in your location or in your area. It's also very, um, it's user friendly and you can, you can see and just click on where you need to go. And that's Thank you, Shelley. Awesome. Um, the next presenter and our last one up is uh, Eastmed Tourism. So uh, we're going to hear from Jenny. Turn it over to you. Hi again, everybody. Um, so welcome. I'm. Uh, I've been super excited about this conference for quite a while now. It's been a year in the making. I just wanted to, to make that statement uh, before we start. Um, yeah, when I presented the idea to Shar, she says, let's do it. So it's like, wow, working with, with Shar and Community Futures has been amazing. So definitely a great organization to partner with. So I fully encourage you to work with them. 
Um, so thank you, Shar, for being my rock through all of this. Um, so Eastman Tourism is um, a nonprofit organization. We've been around since, oh, even way before 2011. Um, it actually uh, incorporated as a Eastman Tourism Association in 2011, but even before that, it was an economic development uh, group. And Leslie Goldry has quite a history with, with Eastman Tourism and she'd be better to speak to that. So um, it's evolved quite a bit over time. And we just finished our most recent strategic planning session with Char at uh, Winnipeg River Community Futures. So we have um, an updated mission statement. So our mission is to grow tourism in Eastern Manitoba with marketing assistance, knowledge building, enhancing community partnerships, and helping develop the tourism experience. And our, our vision statement is now, Eastern Manitoba is a vibrant tourism destination where visitors are openly welcomed and entrepreneurial spirits grow and prosper. So, and we can see that happening here during this conference. There are so many entrepreneurs stepping forward and uh, sharing their ideas with us. And it's, it's super exciting to see that. Yep, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the industry benefits. So what we do um, at Eastman Tourism is we primarily focus on tourism development and whether it's a business, a not-for-profit, community, or re the regional focused, um, it's, it's all of that encompassing. And with this strategy that is coming out of this conference, it will be a uh, regional focus um, on the sector development. So our main strategic plan is separate from this. So I'm really excited to see how that evolves um, after this conference. So education as well. We are, um, of course, MTech is our uh, number one place to go uh, for any kind of training. Um, Pre-COVID, we were bringing the trainer to your community, which was an amazing benefit because then um, people didn't have to travel to Winnipeg. So um, I'm sure that will be viable again in the future. Um, so we're just starting to develop some, uh, some virtual training workshops. We've, we've done a couple, um, but we will be doing more of that. And that was identified through our strategy session or strategic planning. And so we'll be offering more uh, virtual um, training from our perspective and as well as some networking events with uh, the industry. And of course our e-news, I'm always sharing information in there with the industry. Um, you know, little things that come across my desk that I believe are important to the industry. So be sure to sign up for our e-news um, we're just starting to develop um, uh, two different um, e-news. One is for industry and the other is for the visitor. So we've just started the visitor one. So you're more than welcome to sign up for both. So that we're implementing very soon. So we'll put that in our main e-news. So for marketing initiatives, we have our, our, our flagship, our website. Um, so we have a lot of content on there and um, we also have, that's our home for our blog and the blog that um, we've been putting out, we put out two a week and it's getting, they're getting a lot of attention. So it's driving a lot of traffic to our website. So um, any of our industry members that are featured in our blogs, um, you know, if you take a look at your statistics, you'll probably see a lot of traffic coming from the Eastman Tourism website. Um, so yes, as in speaking of that, our social media has grown quite a bit too over the past few years. Um, we work with a marketing company called Zam Communications out of Lac de Bonnet, and they've been fabulous. So um, there's some exciting things happening there. So with our visitor guide this year as, as our uh, marketing collateral, um, like many other organizations, we decided not to do a print guide, which was 
you know, a bit of a shock when we decided not to because we've been doing it for so many years. Um, so we decided to go digital and uh, we're going to give it a try. And uh, the beauty of that is that your ad can change partway through the year um, because of the, the flux in the industry. We wanted to be able to adapt more quickly. And with a print guide, um, of course, you can't adapt uh, as well with that. So that's why we're going digital for this year. Um, and we may keep it and as well as doing some print. Uh, so we will still have the print because uh, that is really important as well. That print is not going to die anytime soon. So keep that in mind in your marketing. Um, so we do also a little bit of advocacy um, on a local level as well as provincial. Um, you know, for example, we took part in uh, signage strategy with uh, Travel Manitoba and other stakeholders. Um, and then if there's any uh, local initiatives happening uh, that the industry needs help with, we can also advocate for that. Um, we also provide uh, support letters for any uh, grants that you're applying for. We can even help you with your application. Um, you know, to help you formulate the correct wording and, you know, those key, key indicators, right? Um, and of course, with uh, community projects, we can help advocate for. Next slide, please. So our recovery tactics. So um, the conference was, was one of them, um, but I have to admit the idea of a tourism development conference even came pre-COVID. Maybe it was my spidey senses, I don't know, a premonition, but, um, and of course, as Char full, fully knows, we had to pivot that as well um, because it was going to be an in-person conference. And so we decided to go with digital. And I think it's um, a good thing because um, we were able to have a bigger reach and uh, looking at the numbers over the next four days, you know, that to me is a clear indication. Um, had it been in person, we may not have these numbers that we're getting. Uh, so that's really, really encouraging. Uh, so this is, has been, I'm hoping for all of you, um, a really good conference to help you with, with recovery. And as Celeste mentioned, um, this is our opportunity to work on development. So um, since we have all this downtime, so, and also with our announcement yesterday from our chair, Mel Parant, um, I'm super excited about the Eastman uh, Experience Development Team. Um, you can't imagine, um, you know, how happy I am because um, working as a team of one, although I'm not a team of one, I have an amazing board, a great marketing team to work with. Um, uh, but now we'll have more people at the table to work with on uh, tourism development on a community basis, a regional basis. So I'm super excited about that. So in terms of recovery uh, through our marketing, um, we had to be, you know, pretty careful about what we were uh, marketing as everybody knows, right? And, and uh, how you were putting that out to the public. So Travel Manitoba was great at, um, uh, guiding us on what to do there. Um, so with the marketing recovery tactic, as I mentioned, the digital guide, uh, we're also doing a partnership with Manitoba by motorcycle. So you can look for that in our social media. Um, so with that, of course, it's an individual thing. Uh, so we're getting more people out on motorcycle in the region. Um, and we have a special campaign coming up. I'm not going to say anything about it, but uh, we're pretty excited about it. Um, the uh, junior member of ZAM Communications, she uh, used a line in one of our blogs, and I'm looking at that and I think, hey, there's a campaign around that. So uh, I'm super excited to share that with you later on. Um, so as I mentioned, as a recovery tactic, uh, doing some networking more, uh, virtual, of course, so it'll be business to business as well as business uh, to industry. So we'll invite in um, industry experts um, in some of these uh, virtual events. 
and uh, you'll get to pick their brains and have some one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, I'm really happy to be offering that. And of course, our continued services and benefits uh, with our membership and partnership program. So if you're interested in um, becoming a partner with Eastman Tourism, uh, this for this year for new businesses or businesses who have not partnered with us, our membership is free this year. Um, and uh, so then the following year, then uh, you would hopefully be able to buy a membership and it's not very expensive. It's, uh, $125 to $150. Um, so those services, but really one of the key things I wanted to point out is that Eastman Tourism helps you to navigate the industry. We're kind of the go-between. Um, so we're here to help you with that um, and, you know, point out all the different resources that are available. And, and Community Futures will do the same thing and any of those of the other organizers sitting at the table. So, thank you very much. Okay, and here's uh, Jenny's contact information. If you don't have it, uh, it's here. This um, slide deck will be available um, in our resource section. Uh, you'll be getting an email uh, probably on Monday to give you all the instructions on where to find everything. So I'm just gonna stop my share so I can check out our chat room. I was scared to move or do anything and look at anything else so I didn't ruin the slide uh, advancing feature here when I was having trouble earlier. I think it was I was doing too many things in the background. So we'll stop that and uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to enter any uh, questions they have in the chat box for the panel. Uh, for. Uh, all together or for um, just anyone in particular. And then um, we'll, we'll be moving on. But uh, I'm just gonna look in the chat box here. And also if you wanna pop on the screen and ask your question, please do that too. Um, so I'm just gonna start from the most current and work my way backwards here. Um, so Maureen is asking about ETA membership, if it's available online or to call in and Jenny's going to post a link for us in the chat box. So if you're interested in becoming an ETA member, I encourage you to do that, take advantage of all the networking and everything else Jenny has to offer. No, looks like we got all the questions there. So maybe another well, minute here. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I just wanted to ask a, a question of clarification. Um, I know recently, or it seems like recently, uh, the distinction between Francophone and Métis resources have been separated. Am, am I hearing that right or wrong? It used to be when, when we would call SIDEM, they would say, uh, that uh, they would be able to help both Métis and Francophone tourism. And uh, Sylvie, you might be able to answer that question. I'm not sure. Who... Yeah, yeah, sorry if I put up the wrong message. Not at all, it's not separated. Francophone tourism includes Métis, it includes immigration, and it includes Francophones okay. born and raised here, whether Métis or not. So okay. we definitely still support Métis tourism. Sorry if I sent out the wrong message, but... no. Oh, I think I think I got that uh, impression from Travel Manitoba when they came out with their 2021 um, uh, plan. And maybe somebody from Travel Manitoba could speak to that. Um, potentially, uh, George. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Is, is, it, is it? Is it? Is it George talking right now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Hi. It's George. How are you? Um, I, you know what? I'm gonna have to get you to repeat the question because my video is cutting in and out. Can you repeat it? Yeah, I was under the impression uh, when uh, Colin Ferguson made a presentation uh, that the resources uh, that used to go to Francophone and Métis uh, for tourism um, has now been uh, somehow separated. Its uh, resources are going to uh, Francophone through one agency and to Métis at another agency? No, I don't think that that's the case. Um, okay. 
there's so we have the uh, francophone tourism advisory committee um sid B actually sits on that committee as well and uh Fr uh, like Franco Metzi is definitely still paramount in front and center within that, um, that, that committee. And it's very much embedded in the Francophone tourism for the province. Um, but when we speak about, you know, Anglo Metis or Metis who do not speak French, then that would be, um, I guess, would be considered separate in terms of the topic that you're, you're kind of raising. Um, but both would belong under Indigenous tourism as well, and would fall under Holly's hat as well. Okay, and, and that I, again, it, it's an impression, I, I may be wrong, but that those resources uh, for Métis would be mostly going to, say, Boniface. Uh, Tourisme Riel would be taking up a great chunk of those resources. I think it. I think it depends on which resources that you're you're meaning. Like, are you thinking like of, of supports? Money. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. For Su support. Yeah. Okay, support. Money. Yeah. Uh, pe people on the boards. Uh, the provincial boards are from say Boniface. Uh, I, I just don't get the feeling that the, that the, some of those resources are going to be allocated to the rest of the province, because there are francophone Métis uh, that are not, uh, that don't live in St. Boniface anymore. They might be from St. Boniface, but they're not from there anymore. Yeah. Tourism Riel is a big chunk of Francophone tourism, but, uh, you know, who's on the boards that are representing the Métis outside of uh, Winnipeg? Oh, yeah, um, I can actually get you those names. Um, so at this time, I actually have it up. Um, so well, I think I think I know the names. It's just the resources that I'm working yeah, about. Yeah, no, I understand what you mean. So right now we have Pauletsky from uh, l'Union Nationale Métis Saint Joseph de Manitoba, okay. and we also have um, uh, David Dandino okay. from Ezéar Boulet, and they both sit on the Francophone Tourism Advisory Committee. Uh, but so far as the funding supports go, uh, funding is given annually to Tourism de L and SIGEM. And so you are right in saying that I think the, the ratio has changed slightly, but I don't, it hasn't changed based on um, the Métis sector specifically. It's changed based on um, I guess the supports that are expected from both organizations, but we can also take that offline and because I don't want to give you the wrong answer and I can ask kind of, Brigitte to kind of address that more if you'd like. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks George for your question. Um, there is a question here posed from Patty. Um, she's asking about insurance. If uh, anybody has any resources around insurance. Jenny, do you offer anything in terms of your ETA benefits to members around group insurance? Is that part of it or no? No, we don't. Um, but I, I mean, I would, if that's what her question is, you know, I would highly recommend connecting with their local chambers of commerce. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's that kind of insurance or maybe it's liability that she's referring to, I'm not sure. Yeah, Patty, do you want to expand maybe on your question a little bit? Sure. It, it was more about liability insurance and the um, difficulty in explaining to insurance uh, providers the services that are being offered. So if there was any, um, maybe even a, a workshop or, or information about what is the best way to educate insurance providers and give them good information or? Um, I'm happy to chime in here, Char. Um, so what we have done recently at Travel Manitoba is um, in working actually with uh, George a little bit, George has actually brought up, this is a concern within Manitoba uh, as it relates to commercial liability insurance and special risk insurance. And so what we ended up doing is we sent out kind of a survey to see and assess what the challenges are within Manitoba in securing commercial risk insurance. And so we're just going through those preliminary findings at this time. And from there, we have some recommendations that we'll likely be making. So what I would do is I would actually stay tuned uh, for some news on that subject that would come out hopefully within the next couple of months um, on the issue, but um, we're, we're aware of the challenges and exploring kind of what avenues we can, how we can address it. 
Well, that's great. It's good to know that that's being done at a, at a higher level. Like, so thank you for that. No problem. I'm glad I could help. I'm um, sorry. I don't have a more specific answer I can give you right now. That's okay. Yeah. I'd like to uh, jump in on that conversation if I may. Hello. Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. So, so yeah, thanks Elise. Uh, I was going to jump in if you weren't, but uh, Elise does, did talk about uh, the challenges that we have here in Manitoba. But I'd like to say that this is a challenge for all tourism operators in Canada. Uh, there is a group called the Summit. Uh, they're out of uh, Ottawa. Uh, they've gotten together uh, people from across Canada, from, from C to C to C. And uh, they noticed that, that this is one of the big challenges insurance companies do not understand that uh, going out in the woods, canoeing, et cetera, is uh, inherently risky for operators and uh, liability, liability and insurance is a big problem and uh, they're addressing it nationally as we speak. So uh, yeah, we had uh, the same uh, reaction when we um, were talking with Travel Manitoba, they said the same thing, uh, insurance is a big problem. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a hindrance to economic development completely. Uh, insurance people don't understand what we're going through. So uh, uh, that's, that's, that's my comment on a national basis. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it, that's a tough one for sure to, to handle. I'm glad to hear it's being addressed at a larger level. So stay tuned up on what's happening there. Um, so I just have a question I'd like to pose to each of our panel members and then we'll close after this section after uh, you res each respond to the question. As the tourism sector changes direction and we begin to rebound and recover from this pandemic, what do you feel your agency is best positioned to help with? So pick one thing that you'd like to highlight as closing comments on how you can best help um, tourism agencies recover. And let's go in order. Let's start with uh, Travel Manitoba, Elise. Thanks, Char. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, Travel Manitoba's role is to provide leadership by collaborating with tourism businesses, communities, destination marketing organizations, and, and governments as well. And throughout COVID-19, Travel Manitoba has been providing support through the delivery of different resources um, that provide research, uh, essential insights, and recommendations for recovery from a strategic standpoint. So most recently, uh, the Manitoba Tourism Strategy has been updated along with other strategic plans that are following the same path. These strategies are receiving kind of uh, updates to reflect the impact of COVID-19 and identify what recovery really looks like in order to pave a way forward. Um, recent recovery insights and models uh, will demonstrate a return to 2019 expenditure levels by 2024. So the tourism industry is constantly evolving and continued success for Manitoba will depend on preparing for new customer or consumer and visitor demands and a changing marketplace. So from a I guess right now the best kind of resources that we can provide is, you know, partnerships, marketing uh, opportunities for when staying at home and local travel, as well as insights into what the future is going to hopefully look like. Thank you. How about ITAC? Holly, what would you say uh, that you're best positioned to help with? So oh, definitely add, add, I can't say the word, add goof to see. <laughs> add goof. <laughs> no, me, I can't say it either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can write it down, but I can't say it. Um, you know, um, Keith Henry has been advocating for uh, Indigenous tourism businesses, you know, well, before COVID, but especially during COVID. And um, the stimulus grants was something that we're able to help the businesses just kind of give them a little bit of relief, you know, to say, okay, I think I could um, last through this season. So, you know, that that's still happening. Um, and, you know, we're hoping for some more stimulus grant funding that would be able to help the businesses with the um, second or third waves. So, you know, make sure to stay tuned 
for that, I always make sure to reach out to um, the businesses that I'm involved with and just update them on any new information or programs that are out there. Um, and then just uh, myself, like helping the businesses develop through the different levels of market readiness. You know, if you need any help, um, just reach out to me and I'll connect you with the right resources. And in Fontaine, what would you say MTech is best positioned to assist our businesses and our nonprofits with in the tourism agents industry? 100% uh, clean it right is what I would say, an enhanced cleaning program that we've developed. And it was our gift to the industry. We put a lot of money into it. So it wasn't, um, when I decided to do it, I asked for provincial funding or to refocus our funding and I couldn't like, you know, things don't work as fast as we do. So we already had it developed when they said we can go ahead and use some of it. So um, we probably made over a hundred thousand. I know we've made over a hundred thousand dollar investment in this because it's it is going to be catastrophic if when businesses open, people won't come because they're nervous. Uh, I'm not one of those people. When the restaurants were open, we went to the restaurants, but that's that's not everybody. So clean it right and enhanced cleaning program where we've been and we're working with travel management on it as well. We're partnering. Um, is, is going to continue to be free. We're going to announce that next week along with the other. So it's instilling consumer confidence, but it's also letting the customers know that this business is, ha has an enhanced cleaning program, that it is safe for their, their employees, for their customers, um, and that they will return. So that's going to be an expectation. And handling difficult situations. So I'll say it's twofold. And if I can think of something else, it'll be three. But um, definitely, this is something that is not going to go away, that people are going to have that expectation. And it's something that we made the commitment to do. Because um, I mean, we're having conversations now. I was looking at a newsletter I wrote last May about as we get to reopen, and it's like, here we go again. And we're not sure what's even going to happen today or tomorrow. So it's, it's going to be a journey. And I would say also for people to hold on and to have that uh, when we added, this, added stress management and mental health, and I'm getting calls from different regions of asking what training do we have on mental health, because this has been, I mean, we're working, right? We're working. And I, I look at it as an organization, um, we have not been impacted by this other than to look around and see what's happening around us. But um, it, 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 the good news is Manitoba will rebound quickly, and I believe that. I look at the, how the, the pent up consumer demand um, but we want to make sure that our businesses are ready to receive people. So, um, but that, that definitely those two programs. And again, it's, um, which will free, are free to the industry and will continue to be free for the industry. And when you go to Kenora, you're going to see it in their windows as well, as we've been supporting Kenora and Northern and now Southern Ontario. So um, this is not just a Manitoba, but this is a, a Canadian problem, but hang on. That's all I'm asking people's hold on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see how that's going to be really valuable for the industry. Thank you for, for providing that. Um, okay, let's uh, go over to Sedem. How, how do you feel Sedem can best assist? Sylvie, if you want to highlight. Yeah, um, I'll take my best guess here. It's how I think we can best assist you um, this upcoming year. I think it's through that new... Um, Grant research service will be a huge help to a lot of people because there's um, already, there's, a lot of people are struggling and it's, we need the, that support, but it's it's a lot of work to be on top of it and to know what's out there and, and who, am I eligible, am I not, da da da. So it's something, at least it's one less thing that you have to do. So I think we can really help you out with that. Um, I really think we can help you out with one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, like we try and be as up to date as we can, uh, listen to all the industry talks and the updates. Um, because again, as a business owner, it's, it's hard to attend all these conferences. And it's hard to read all the newsletters. So um, just by having that, those one-on-one -on -one conversation and talks and, and if you could tell us where your challenges are, um, we should have the information and if not, we'll make sure that we take the time to inform ourselves or we'll partner you with, with our other industry member partners to, to help you um, where those challenges are. So I think those are the, I would say the two ways we can best support you um, during this pandemic. Community Futures, uh, Shelley, what, what do you think we're best positioned to, to provide? 
Um, for us in our office here, um, we creating and facilitating partnerships between tourism businesses and tourism facilities um, to keep the local entrepreneurs up and running to like really support and focus and highlight the shop local, continue to shop local once this is all things start opening up and our people are going to go and then your little mom pop shops go away where that's one of the big things is to to keep everybody to continue shopping local some of the smaller businesses are thriving some of the small towns the grocery store here is thriving right now because people aren't going anywhere they're not going to winnipeg to shop so it's to maintain that and to keep that after things open up um, so that's the biggest thing that we can do right now and of course we offer funding so we are here for if you if you need the help um, there's there's loans available and there's also the option to um, to help with the business expansion if that's a, if that's something that you're looking for as people are starting to develop these new experiences you might need an, an extension loan <laughs> come see us we're not talking about those <laughs> oh, okay thank you Shelley uh, so Jenny will give you our final word here. How do you think Eastman Tourism is best positioned? Oh gosh, wow. Well, after this, these last four days, um, it, I think it's pretty clear we're in a position for uh, tourism development, right? Helping those businesses to develop their experiences so that they are visitor ready. Um, and market ready and uh, ready to hit the ground running as soon as, you know, things are lifted and people can travel more freely. Um, but even now, right, helping them uh, to develop their experiences so that they are, um, you know, ready for whatever comes at them. And I, I think the industry's done a pretty good job of that al already. Um, so development, I would say that's our number one um, and also our net networking opportunities that we're gonna be uh, implementing very soon. Um, and so that the industry can bounce those ideas off of each other and learn from each other and um, yeah, really have a good understanding of what's happening. And as Shelley mentioned, some businesses are thriving, right? They're doing amazingly well right now. Um, and then others are not doing so well. So. We have to find out how we can help those businesses that are not doing as well and how they can uh, pivot so that they, they can, um, you know, increase their revenues. Um, and I, I would think that um, just from my observation in Eastern Manitoba, people were flocking to the country and the trails and, and the parks to, you know, get some fresh air and, um, so they could spread their wings, right? And not have to wear a mask, you know, when they're out in the forest, right? That's your best, you know, form of mental wellness. And so I'm glad that was brought up because um, I think all of rural Manitoba is prime for um, providing that mental wellness for people who that need it, who need to get out and breathe deeply and enjoy the outdoors. So, um, making sure that our communities are prepared for that kind of visitation. You know, we've learned through this past little while that um, some of the infrastructure needs to be improved, right, for those influx of visitors. So, so those are the things that we're working on. And it all works into the development. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that community readiness piece is big and that's going to be worked into our strategy. So I think that's it. Um, I'd like to thank the panelists today uh, for presenting. And again, thanks to all the organizers uh, for bringing the conference together. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Piriat. Uh, she's got a few things uh, before we move into the final session. So over to you. Thanks, Sherry Lynn. You want to sit here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, what we can do now is we can do a quick prize draw for a gift certificate to Johnson Studios. It's a uh, pottery studio in Richer, Manitoba, along the historic Dawson Trail. 
Uh, Karen Johnson is a member of the Dawson Trail Art Tour. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, everybody loves pottery. So anyhow, we'll be doing that draw right away and posting the winner in the chat box. Don't forget to stay to the end, by the way, for our grand prize. There's more to come. Uh, Jenny, I'm good to go. Okay, I'm just going to take that as a yes. I think they're working on it uh, behind the scenes here. Yeah, we're just yes. getting everything ready set up and uh, yeah. you'll be uh, going into the breakout rooms uh, in a few minutes, in a few seconds. Okay, I got a few slides to go through first to set us up, so I'm okay to start? Yes, of course. Okay, thanks Jocelyn. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here again with you folks. There we go. Okay, is that working for everybody? You can see that? Yeah, looks good. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, in this final section, um, our last session here together, uh, we really want to talk now about next, some next steps. You know, we've, we've mentioned throughout the conference, uh, you know, through our announcement uh, about the Tourism Experience Development Team. The other part of that special announcement was the development of a tourism sector growth strategy for the Eastman region. I know some of the folks on uh, the line today are maybe not from the Eastman region, but I think there's development all across rural. So consider your context to be rural as, uh, you know, as I'm speaking. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit more about the tourism uh, growth strategy, uh, kind of what it's gonna look like, what it's gonna cover, and um, really, this is, this is the start of the discussion. This, we, we don't have the strategy mapped out. You know, we wanted to do the conference. We want to hear from you guys. I said in the resource panel that the reason that all of the service providers that you heard from in the panel do the work they do is for you. It's to help you. The more we have going on in our local areas for tourism, whether it be businesses offering products and services and experiences, whether it be our nonprofits and our local tourism committees that are providing things in the communities, whether it be um, people welcoming visitors, whatever it is that's happening, the red community readiness piece, the planning, all of it is so important. What's happening at the local levels is so important. And, and we're trying to figure out at a regional level how we can best support the work you do and what we can do together as a region where we need to focus. So um, I'll just tell you a little bit more about the strategy. Like I said, this is not mapped out by any means. Your input uh, that we're gonna get in our discussion groups today and also on the survey afterwards, you'll have chance to input um, ideas as well, and probably at further points along in the strategy development. So, but we really wanna engage you. We really wanna hear from you. You are the reason we're doing it. So um, it's gonna be our organization that's gonna lead the strategy development, but with this fabulous team that I introduced in, in the last section. Um, the, the folks that are really probably going to be kind of the key corner partners are going to be all of our tourism agencies. So um, at the provincial, at the regional level, our economic development agencies, again, at the local and the regional levels, provincial probably as well, and then our local governments. We know we talked about how community readiness um, is so important and, and making sure we have the infrastructure and the services to support tourism. So um, these will be kind of the cornerstones of, of who will be involved with the uh, strategy and a lot of the regional pieces that are gonna come out of it. Um, the local tourism businesses and agencies are key to the success of this strategy. We really need to see and want to see you guys enthused from this conference and going back and asking yourself, what else can my business do? 
what else can we provide to offer things to visitors and to our communities? What else, what can we do better? What can we do more? You know, that's where, um, you know, the, the strategy and, and pulling things together will really pay off. It will be what you do with it. Um, but everybody has important roles to play, right? And it's how we work together that is really going to be the deciding factor on the success of the strategy. So really want to try through this strategy to kind of identify those strengths, identify those common regional goals that we want to work on, the areas we think we have the best opportunities to advance tourism. We know tourism is a strong economic driver in Eastern Manitoba. Our area is prime for tourism. And, um, you know, while we have so many great, wonderful things, there's still a lot more potential, um, you know, to explore out there. And that's what, that's what the strategy is, is about. So in the strategy, we're going to have clearly defined um, regional priorities, goals, and regional level activities. Okay, that's the, the level that we're looking at for the plan being the basis of the plan is is what we do together as a region and where we focus as a region. Uh, this strategy will define some clear roles and responsibilities. You know, as we heard from all the different support agencies, there's so much to offer and there's, uh, there's so much that we can all do. And when we define those roles and responsibilities a little bit more clearly as it has to do with the strategy and what, where we're going, I think that will make us uh, make things a lot easier to collaborate and to understand who's doing what piece. Um, the strategy is going to recommend some local actions, um, things that are in line with what we're trying to accomplish as a region. Local actions that businesses, agencies, committees, governments, those things you can do to help to contribute, right? And a lot of what you want to do is probably, you know, it's going to fit right in. So anything you think you can do from your perspective and from your business or agency, uh, we want to hear about it. You know, what are your plans? What do you want to do? We want to hear about it in terms of the strategy. We want to hear about it in terms of us being able to support if there's, if there's a need or, or an opportunity. Um, the strategy is going to be monitored by um, both Eastman Tourism and Community Futures Winnipeg River, uh, just so that we can continue to make changes and advance it um, and update it as, as we grow and as um, conditions in the um, environment around us change. I think a lot of the strategy is going to play well into um, the, the Eastman Tourism Strategic Plan. I think there, we're going to see some overlap, but uh, lots of opportunity there too. Um, I think we'll see overlap into some of the strategies that all of our partner agencies have as well. And this is great. And that's where, you know, we get back into that sweet spot that I talked about earlier um, when we're putting all of those things that we have in common when we're working towards common goals. That's how we're going to see the biggest successes. So for the strategy to, to really um, be effective and uh, we really need to hear your input. So what we want to do now is um, go into some small breakout rooms and you guys haven't had a lot of chance on uh, throughout the four days to really talk a lot, you know, to one another. And that's one unfortunate thing about uh, the virtual. You know, we tried to build it in a, a little bit, but it's not the same as being together, I know. But these breakout sessions will have about 10 people in each room. Uh, there'll be a small group mod moderator that will identify themselves to you when you get into your breakout room. We have two discussion questions that, uh, and we have about 20 minutes, so about 10 minutes uh, per question. And so when you are in your breakout room, please put on your camera and your microphone. 
feel free to use the chat too. I know some people are on computers that may not have a, a, a camera or a microphone. So use the chat feature if you need or you prefer. Um, when you're talking, um, just be conscientious that we only have 10 minutes and we really want to hear from as many people as we can for each of those questions, 10 minutes for each question. So try to keep your responses concise. Um, the idea is really to try to brainstorm as big of a list as you can um, of answers to each question. At the 10 minute mark, uh, the moderator will switch over uh, to the next question. So just in advance, we'll apologize if, if somebody didn't get to speak uh, that really wanted to say something. If that does happen, you know what, enter it into the chat room, the moderator will write it down. Also um, afterwards, we're, we're going to have a participant evaluation and we're gonna ask the same questions on the evaluation. So if you feel like you missed something, that you wanted to say or you think of something later, just jot yourself a note and uh, plop it into the participant evaluation form. Um, so to end this breakout room sessions, what you'll see is a one minute warning when it's almost over. And then at the 20 minute mark, uh, you're gonna automatically uh, be diverted back to the main room. So you don't have to do anything on your end. It will happen automatically. Uh, these are the two questions that we're going to ask. Um, unfortunately, there's no way of having these uh, shown once you're in your room. So I do want to go through them and make sure nobody has any questions um, and make sure they're clear. The moderators have the questions and they'll reiterate them verbally in your room. But the first question we're going to ask, what do you see as the key challenges facing tourism in rural Manitoba today? So you can think about your region more globally when you answer this question, or you can comment on things, uh, on the issues and the challenges that you yourself are facing in your business or your agency. Okay, um, the second question we're gonna ask are for your ideas on the types of regional initiatives. So different activities we should be doing or different priority areas. If you can't come up with an idea, maybe you think um, we should focus on education or whatever it is, right? So um, whatever you think is gonna be beneficial for tourism growth in the region, we really want to know if you have any regional wide ideas on activities or priorities. So does anybody have any questions before we go to the breakout rooms? <clears throat> just how does the breakout room work exactly on zoom Do we, like does it just happen automatically or yes so um so in the background m tech was uh while i was speaking they were putting us all into breakout rooms oh. and so okay. as soon as we give the word to go you're going to um automatically be put into a room thank you yeah so right. one la any other questions yeah, quick question. Will it be uh, divided by regions or will it be just a mishmash of different people in different groups? No, it's random. Yep. Okay. Yeah, any other questions? If there's any in the chat room, maybe somebody could read it out loud if there was a question in there. <laughs> I'm too scared to pull it up so I don't lose my screen again. I think we're good to go, Shar. All right, is MTech ready for the breakout rooms? Yes, Assignments? of course. We are. Yeah, we are, and we're going to open all the rooms. Awesome. We'll right. see you all back in 20 minutes in the main room. Thank you. Thank you. In front of me, I was concentrating. <laughs> oh, I saw the clock stop ticking, and I was like, oh, that's got to be our one minute warning. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Chantal, you were on a good conversation there with Dave. Okay. Oh, I think that would be good for you to connect. Yeah, but if there was conversations, encourage you to continue them outside of this for sure. And uh, so let's, um, let's hear a few responses that each of the groups had. Uh, I think we'll just go in number of uh, breakout rooms just to... To, to go in order and when it's uh, we'll get the moderator to uh, give us two responses to each of the two questions and then as we go on 
to the different groups. Um, try to provide answers that you might have got that were different from what we had already heard from the previous uh, moderators. Okay, so uh, who is the moderator in breakout room number one? Hi, it's me. Okay, you go. Okay, so I'm just starting with question number one. Yeah, just do one and then do two right after. Okay, sure. Um, I'm going to talk about the, I guess, the sustainability factor um, more than anything. So, um, although there was a lot of really good points, there was a lot of good points that were raised, to be honest, it's hard to choose kind of just one, but um, the example of Pina was, Pinawa was brought up and the, the kind of over tourism situation that there was in Pinawa this past year. And a lot of, a lot of traffic brought a lot of people, which brought a lot of garbage and pollution to the area. Um, so it would be to find uh, messaging and best practices for practicing responsible tourism on behalf of the visitor while um, also engaging the community to be more welcoming and to, um, potentially form some type of best practices in the community to spearhead um, things that would take care of the natural resources in the area and to help kind of define what they want tourism to look like in the area. Um, and on to number two. This one's tricky. Um, lots of it's 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 a, I'm gonna say it's a split between inserting kind of those best practices of responsible tourism um, and how how to be a responsible responsible visitor into marketing messages, um, but also um, the experiential tourism market um, is probably one of the biggest opportunities. But trying to figure out how to make your existing offer in, into an experiential tourism product and how to partner and collaborate with those in the community. But I think what segued from there was um, potentially um, that more communication between community members and, and business owners might be really beneficial for the area. Awesome, thank you. Good job, group one. All right, uh, who is the moderator in uh, group two? I think we were group two. So uh, you want me to do both questions? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so one of the challenges was, you know, closing of, for example, a museum or a staging area like Celeste was talking about, because those are the places where you can host a lot of events. So when you have to close down, where do you host activities and events? Um, I mean, it works in summer outdoors, but winter is, is always tough. Um, as a solo entrepreneur, sometimes it's hard to pivot and find the resources. You know, we say pivot, but easier said than done. Um, but what's been great or what is great with this conference is we're seeing all these organizations that are working close together and that people weren't aware were working together. So having more um, um, like togetherness and, and, and all that and, and now it's to keep that going, right? That it doesn't stop after this conference. So if we can continue by maybe reaching out to the RMs in a similar way, um, or that these organizations can, can create networking opportunities and, and to connect businesses and, and such um, so that they know what's going on and they, they know what the resources are and things like that. Um, there was also a challenge of a low commitment rate for, as far as visitors go because our hours aren't always as consistent in rural areas because we can't be open all the time. So it's hard to get people, let's say, from Winnipeg to come to your area when you're not always open um, and when there's less of a density of things to do and that competition of there's more density elsewhere, right? So um, the marketing to reach the Winnipeg client and also base infrastructure, you know, washrooms, as simple as that is always a challenge. And we also talked about the natural environment, which was already mentioned, um, you know, with more tourists, protecting the environment and educating uh, the businesses as well as the visitors on, on what that means exactly. For the second one, we kind of mostly talked about one thing and that was to kind of decolonizing or um, having a deconstructed way to present to people um, 
who these organizations are and connecting businesses together, not always at a high level. Um, so hold on, what did I write here? Um, and to present, to be able to present to people who aren't aware they're part of the tourism industry, you know, some people call it something else, but they are part of the industry. So how do we approach them? How do we connect people? How do people know where to start? Who do I contact first? So, and, and presenting it in a more approachable, scale back way. Um, in a nutshell, that's that. Okay, great. Sounds like you guys had some really good conversations. Thank you. Um, and who is the moderator for group number three? Hi, Liz. Okay, you're up, Shelly. Okay, um, because this really uh, pertains to our region. Um, one of the things was the old school attitudes of the councils and government in general, worried about drainage, culverts, ditches, more than they're worried about the economic or the possible um, options that are, or opportunities they have with tourism in their areas. Um, also, what was another real one? Um, leadership who understands tourism and how it relates to their areas and um, public facilities was another one. Um, for question two, um, the initiative would be training, um, training consumer, or sorry, training in customer service. Um, so when people are there, they understand or the, the sellers and the, the opportunity for the entrepreneurs to know how to have the customer service and for the people that they're um, employing to know how to do that and to how to be champions for their areas and, and to um, send them to the other areas within. Um, also to develop better relationships with highways to help support tourism. So highways and infrastructure, um, there's areas where you're driving through, whether there can be signage there, that was one of the things. And it was also with the infrastructure being horrible in Manitoba, the highways are horrible. So when they're fixing one in a year, or it takes two years sometimes to fix them, what happens to that tourism industry that's there? It, there's no... There's no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there's no plan for them to, where to go, how to, how to get there, the, the detour to get to the place they're trying to get to. Wayfinders. Yes. Yeah, not sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Shelly. Thank you, group uh, number three. Okay, uh, Jenny was the moderator for group four, so we'll turn it over to, uh, to her. Okay, so um, one of the key challenges, or a couple of them, um, and I don't think they've been mentioned yet um, for the region, is um, one of them was accessibility. So we, we have some assets that are somewhat remote, um, so there is lack of accessibility there. Um, but that actually also is part of number two as an initiative or priority is creating, you know, accessibility and connectivity in the region. Um, so I think it's an opportunity for an entrepreneur maybe. Um, so accessibility, but also in uh, question one, you know, the engagement on uh, that, those levels. Uh, so I guess there's a sense of apathy as well with the residents. Uh, they don't think that they're special in their, you know, what they offer in their community, but really they are. Um, they don't see it. So a process of education, I think. Um, and then, uh, and of course, internet came up, that type of connectivity. Um, and then for question two, what types of regional initiatives or priorities um, and it was suggested that one of the uh, things was encouraging businesses to make sure they do a business plan um, as an operator, whether they're an existing business or a new business. So it helps um, give them direction as well um, in, in uh, the tourism sector. 
Um, and another one that came up was uh, having the Eastman Experience Development Team. So that will probably help address a lot of the uh, regional initiatives or priorities. It will help to identify those. So, and then red tape as well was mentioned, um, you know, on the provincial or federal level. And that's it from this end. Kelly and group number four. Uh, and who is the moderator for group five? That would be me. Okay, Ryan, you're up. Okay, for number one, what are the key challenges facing tourism in rural Manitoba today? Um, a big one we came up with was lack of funding and due to COVID, the funding opportunities have been cut down quite a bit because some of these tourism agencies and organizations are, are funded by nonprofit organizations whose funding methods have been cut due to the COVID not being able to do their regular fundraising activities, whether it's bake sales, um, art shows, events, it, they have all had to kind of cut back on that, those methods. Um, another one uh, is the disconnect uh, between uh, the disconnect when you need government advice or help, um, whether it's something simple or needing a berm, building permit, there's sometimes long, long delays. And connectivity is another one where, whether it's cell service, Wi-Fi, like being in rural Manitoba, a lot of areas still struggle with that today. Um, for number two, uh, what type of regional act initiatives or priorities do you think would be beneficial to tourism um, to kind of build on facilities? Uh, a lot of like when starting a tourism business, it's uh, our tourism related business, it's where to start, um, being able to know where to go. Um, so we thought a tourism roadmap would be very helpful. Um, for those businesses starting out um, and to have it be consistent with other, like with the tourism organizations that we currently have, have Travel Manitoba have the same version that say hypothetically Community Futures with Big River would have just so it's consistent and doesn't misguide people or confuse them in any way. Um, another one uh, I was just was a, a funding guide uh, for these tourism related businesses that may need to rely a little bit more so on grants. Um, so they know where they can go and how they could, uh, what grants are available to them. And those are the two main ones we came up with for our group. Thank you, uh, Ryan and group number five. And I think from process of elimination, Holly must have been our moderator for Group six. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know what number we were. So <laughs> good thing I'm last. <laughs> um, so for the first question, what do you see as um, some key challenges facing tourism in Eastern or ru rural Manitoba today? Um, there was a really good one mentioned internet connectivity, um, which I think all of us from rural areas um, are dealing with, right? It's very stressful, especially if you're trying to run a business and, you know, bring visitors in, like you need internet um, in this day and age. So um, they mentioned even um, uh, giving up the licensing and booking provincial spots and, you know, all of that is online based, but if we don't have the internet to do it, then um, it could be very stressful and slow progress down. Um, and then the second thing was infrastructure. So wayfind, wayfinding signage, um, just a better communication and signage and where things actually are in the province um, and public bathrooms, like better access to public bathrooms. And then for number two, um, what types of regional initiatives or priorities would be beneficial to tourism sector growth? And um, it was mentioned again, the wayfinding um, signage, public bathrooms um, were emphasized. Um, partnerships to bring this conversation about. So partnering with maybe Travel Manitoba or somebody um, you know, on a provincial level to bring those conversations up to that, that level. 
Um, and then planning properly, um, you know, sitting down and actually talking about the effects of tourism and um, having your plan put in place. Um, oh, and then another one that was really good was industry connectivity, just like this conference to connect, you know, um, organizations, business owners together um, to talk about the issues because it's not it's not uh, seen a lot or done a lot, right? So they really emphasized how much they enjoyed this conference and everything that they learned over the past uh, four days. So um, to keep that up. And that's it. All right, thank you, Holly. Thanks, group six. Good job uh, to all the groups. Um, this is a really great start to the discussion. Um, I really appreciate all your input and uh, we want to make sure that the strategy is developed, uh, you know, that's going to be meaningful uh, for everyone involved. So um, I thank you for your input. For the moderators, if you don't mind to uh, type up your group's responses and, and just try to add as much information uh, so uh, as possible for each of the bullet points, just so that I don't misunderstand anything. Um, as I wasn't obviously in every group. Uh, so that'll be really helpful and no rush. I can get that from you anytime uh, in the next few weeks. Um, for participants, um, again, I know it was a short time that we were in the breakout rooms and this is just a start to the discussion. Um, I just wanna reiterate again to um, think about these questions and to um, mark down any other ideas you might come up with uh, on those evaluation forms. We really want the more information and the more input we get, uh, we'll start to see where people are saying the same things and we'll start to see that the priorities are arising from what's said over and over again. Um, and, and then we also don't wanna miss anything, right? So, so that'll be great. Um, we'll be looking for more input too from other people outside of this conference. Um, all our key agencies, uh, there'll be a, a, a plan put forward to gather more input into the strategy. And once the strategy is developed um, to the point of a draft, we're going to come back and share it with everybody and get some more feedback um, and make sure it's, it's reading the way it should uh, to, to all of you. So again, just thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I couldn't be happier with how the conference turned out. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you now, Pirette, to um, make your final comments and to wrap us up. Right on. Well, thank you, uh, Shar, and thank you again to all our tourism panels and for all of you participants for your input. Um, I just uh, want to mention to you all, uh, remind you that the all the conference resources will be available on the Eastman Tourism website and the recordings will be posted there after the conference as well. For those who are still with us, you are all entered into the grand prize draw, which we will have now. Uh, the draw is for a two night stay at the house, uh, the staff house rather, bed and breakfast in Seven Sisters Fall, uh, dinner for two at the Dam restaurant in Seven Sisters Falls and four green fees at Granite Hills Golf Club in the RM of Lake Dubani. Wow. That oh, is please something. take me, whoever wins the <laughs> golf. Please take me. <laughs> Sounds plus, wonderful. I'll be your plus one. <laughs> in closing, I, I do want to thank you all. Um, thank you to all our sponsors, uh, especially Western Economic Diversification Canada, the conference committee, all those businesses who contributed prizes, and of course uh, for you to for being there. Um, I think I can speak uh, for everyone. I think it was really upbeat, very informative, enlightening, inspiring, and so valuable. Thank you. Merci, Miigwech. Have a great summer, everyone, and a busy upcoming tourism season, hopefully, in beautiful Manitoba. Merci. Passe une belle été. Talk soon.